The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but they would be too much for you now. But when the Spirit of truth comes, he will lead you to the complete truth, since he will not be speaking as from himself, but will say only what he has learnt, and he will tell you of the things to come. He will glorify me, since all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. Everything the Father has is mine. That is why I said, all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. The Gospel of the Lord. In the early church, the first few Christian centuries, there was quite a lot of agonizing um, about how to express the mystery of the Trinity. God, of course, had revealed himself through Jesus to the early church, but they needed to think about how do they put this into words, what they believed about Jesus. So a lot of things about God's nature, his substance, divinity, which are all couched in um, Greek philosophical words. Those are important, but it's also important for us to understand um, the inner life of the Trinity in as much as he's revealed it to us because it helps us not only to understand God, but to understand ourselves because we're made in the image and likeness of God. And so if we understand that God who's made us, we understand how we will reflect that image and likeness in ourselves. Now Jesus, when he's speaking the spirit of the spirit of truth, he tells us that he's not going to be speaking as from himself, as if he's got his own kind of knowledge, but he speaks of what he has learnt, what he's learnt from the Father. So this idea of the Holy Spirit learning makes me think um, of the, the word knowledge, of knowing. So it's something that you don't have of yourself, but it's something that you share and something that someone gives to you. And in fact, we know, perhaps you know as well, the, um, the word know in the scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures, is a much richer understanding of that word know that we have. It's also used to describe romantic love, or conjugal love, um, so that that intimate union of persons is described as knowing. So Noah, um, sorry, um, Adam knew his wife Eve and they begat a child. So when we use this kind of idea of knowledge within the Trinity, we're talking about an intense love within the Trinity itself that's self-revealing, that's intimate. And this is really important because it's only like that that we can understand that God can be love. Because God, or anybody, needs another in order to love. And so before God made the world, before there was anything else, only God, God could still be his nature being love because there's a trinity of persons and that's so intense that they're not three single gods one God one divinity and yet within God there is a separation of persons so that there can be a sense that there is a communion of life a self-giving and a receiving of each one to the other and that's the wonderful way in which God has revealed himself to us through Jesus Now, St. Paul, in the letter to the Romans, speaks about suffering. It's a difficult subject, isn't it? Because we can talk about it, and yet when we do suffer something, when we know someone who suffers intensely, whether it might be because of an illness, or it might be because of uh, an inner anguish of mental or psychological, um, or the things that are happening to us, family and friends, or whatever it is, um, it can be hard to put it into words, can't it? Nevertheless, Suffering is part of our human condition, but God has changed it. And he's changed it because he chose it himself as a means of our redemption. So to use suffering, the suffering of Jesus on the cross, freely as a means of taking away our sins was this wonderful part of God's divine plan. 
So he's changed suffering. In other words, it gives it a new orientation, which doesn't mean to say there's no longer pain. There's still the pain, but we, still, but we have a new orientation. So rather than the pain causing us resentment, anger, frustration, and so on, rather it gives us a sense that this is entering into the mystery of the God himself because Jesus himself has suffered for us. And our St. Paul says, tells us that we can actually boast about our sufferings. Because, he says, sufferings bring patience, and patience brings perseverance. Now that obviously is only if suffering is reorientated within the mystery of God's uh, incarnation, Jesus becoming man. And he says this patience brings perseverance. Well, actually, perseverance is not the best translation. Really, it's a strength of character. And there, we can understand that, can't we? Because there are some people we know who suffer greatly and yet don't grumble, don't complain, and have great inner strength. And that's what really St. Paul is talking about there. And he says, and this brings hope. Hope we thought about recently um, in the scripture readings on Sunday. Um, so hope is, is assurance of things hoped for. It's a bit similar to the idea of faith. So this hope is not deceptive because God's love is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So this this wonderful idea of filling our heart, not just our mind, but our heart um, with the Holy Spirit. And this is that activity of the Holy Spirit who comes into our lives, the one who's been promised by Jesus that he would send. And in the book of Proverbs, we have a reference to wisdom. There's quite a bit of wisdom literature, as it's called, in the, in the scriptures, the Old Testament scriptures. And there are times when it actually becomes personified. So the idea of wisdom isn't just intellectual, an attribute of God, but the wisdom is a person in itself. Now that's not the fullness of revelation about the Holy Spirit being a divine person, not there in the Old Testament scriptures, but it is part of the ongoing self-revelation of God, preparing us for the revelation that we find in Jesus 2,000 years ago. But in the, in the Hebrew we find that the, the word that's used for he created me in the beginning from everlasting is in translated here. It's a rather good translation because it's not in fact the beginning, it's, it's from beginning. So there's no definite, definite article, which is um, heth in the uh, in the, in the Hebrew. And I'm told that this, in fact, is significant because when you miss out the definite article, it in fact means an eternal beginning rather than simply saying, the beginning is over there and now we're past the beginning and all that stuff behind was before the beginning. There isn't that sense in the Hebrew. In fact, it's an eternal kind of beginning. So what we're reading here is this wisdom, which with our Christian interpretation sees that as a beginning of our understandings of the Holy Spirit, existed always in a sort of anterior um, eternity, if you like. Um, and he was there, isn't it this wonderful description, I have to read it again when you go home, um, of this Proverbs chapter 8, of being there before all this wonderful creation. And as it goes on, it starts talking about God delighting in his creation, um, which is wonderful, the joy in God about what he's done. And then it culminates right at the end of this reading, which was verse 31, um, when we, th we see wisdom, or the Holy Spirit, delighting to be with the sons of men. And isn't that wonderful, that God actually wants to be with us and enjoy being with us? And that's what we find then in, in the New Testament, that revelation that Jesus gives us, that he goes to the Father in order to send the Holy Spirit to dwell amongst us. And here we have here in this bit of the book of the Proverbs, he wants to dwell with us because he's delighted in us. Not just because he's done a good job making DNA and transitory DNA and RDNA and enzymes and things like that that make the stuff of life, but he's delighted to be with us because we're made in his own image and likeness. He thinks each one of you, and me as well, I hope, yes he does, um, delights in us, the way he's made us. Of course, we've got little areas that need tweaking up and to repent from sin. 
but he's delighted in each one of us. And that's the wonderful way in which the Holy Spirit, um, the Godhead himself, dwells in our world and dwells in each one of us. And then one day will delight in bringing us into his home, into heaven, the eternal life.